Hey friends out there, Rob here. Today I want to talk to you about the Yolo Live S7. Cameras are really important to what I do. So if you're in video production, you know they fill so many different roles. So I'm going to show you the cameras that I use. I'm going to share with you why the S7 is so important in my lineup. Now, one thing you got to know, normally I'm working with mirrorless cameras of some sort, or definitely, you know I love my camcorders, and without question, I love my Obspot Tail 2 and Tail Airs. These things work great. Something that all of these have in common is a battery. So working wirelessly, also without a battery, is important. Now, I don't mind uh, HDMI cables from time to time, but battery cables and things like that to plug stuff in can be difficult to work with. And that's because mainly when I'm working with things, I'm in areas, tight, constrained spaces I have to set up quickly, and trying to find mains power and stuff like that, eh, it's tough. So if I'm going to work with a piece of equipment that has a battery or a cable, it needs to fulfill a role very strongly, very sturdy. <laughs> and I want you guys to meet my little kitty cat, Georgie. She's over here attacking my feet, <laughs> and she might say hi. <laughs> There you go, Georgie. <laughs> so when we're talking about this, I, I want to show you an image. Right now, you're looking at my camcorder. And this is one of my large sensor camcorders. This is, of course, the Panasonic AGCX350. Pa pa pa. But we're going to switch over to, now, we're looking at the YoloLive YoloCam S7. The difference between these two other than the battery and the long zoom is interchangeable lenses that you have on the Yolo Live S7, as well as a larger sensor. We have a Micro Four Thirds sensor. So we can use the Panasonic and the Micro Four Thirds mounts to put different lenses on this camera, right? And we have a larger sensor. Now, in a minute, we're going to talk about what that means, but I want you to look and just see the difference in the background. We'll, we'll chit-chat a little bit about why the image between these two cameras look different in just a moment, but I want you to see the background back there. It is true. I'm using a 24-millimeter wide angle on the uh, Panasonic, and over here, I'm using a 30-millimeter or a 15-millimeter, uh, which is equivalent to a 30 uh, but anyways, in their full-frame equivalents, both of these lenses are a 30 and 24. So a little wider angle lens, 24, is harder to show a shallow depth of field. So let's zoom in to about 30. Okay, now we're zoomed in to about 30. And um, the framing isn't exactly the same, but face detect is working. And you can see how these two look side by side. Now, again, the framing is, isn't the same. While we're looking at these, I want to do one final thing for you. I want to show you the S7 in my hand. So now that you get to see it, check out this thing, right? Let's zoom in over here. You see the background in the bokeh now, right? <laughs> so the, <laughs> we're talking about bokeh. Just look at the background blur back there. Okay, so when you've got something cl close focus and you zoom in, you can really get that background blur from a camcorder even, there's a whole bunch of stuff. That's not what it's about. I just wanted you to recognize that both cameras are capable of getting the background blur if you want, but the S7 does it right away just because it's got an interchangeable lens that supports a larger sensor. So it makes it easier to get that background blur. Now, currently the S7 actually comes set up to work just like this in a vertical orientation. Yellow Lived includes a bracket that you connect on the bottom this little square piece right here is another part of my bracket, but this bracket allows you to mount it vertically. We've got a laser adjusted focus and face detect autofocus is built into this. And on the back, we have three different ports. Okay. And those three ports are going to be, well, actually, I guess we have four. We've got a USB-C for data communication. We've got a USB-C for power. We've got an HDMI port, and we also have a line in or a mic in so that we can put a microphone. On the front side, of course, we have uh, our lens, as you can see, right? Just like exactly what you would expect. And you can now see the lens that I'm using on it. We've got a cold shoe up here at the top too. Okay. 
I want you to come around and be able to see what's happening right here. So I gotta bring my other camera in. Okay, great. So now you can see we've got a couple of different cameras and you're in camera inception real quick. So what I want you to look at is what we're actually got right here as <laughs> and I'm going to try to keep it from uh, being so much camera inception for you. Uh, the way that we've got everything plugged in should be pretty simple to see how we're maneuvering around here on the screen right here. If I wanted to, I could actually adjust quite a bit every setting on the yellow cam just by tapping the upper right corner. Now here i got to do it without switching. So do that and we go into camera settings. Now, now that we're in camera settings, you guys should be able to see this entire panel. we got all kinds of stuff to include zooms, right? And you can do a slow zoom as well, a smart zoom, uh, as well as our standard configuration control. Now over here, we can actually adjust everything from our image version. These are, this is the exact same suite of tools that we get when we're using YOLO Live Compose on our desktop. Also, when you use YOLO Live Compose on your desktop, everything that you do in YOLO Live Compose saves to the camera. So it also remembers that setting when you plug it into any YOLO box. YOLO Box Extreme allows this amount of configuration. The other ones, to my knowledge, do not. So over here, we've got image, sharpness, contrast, saturation, distortion correction, so distortion correction for the lens, as well as shading or vignette compensation. Now up here where it says image version, you can actually create your own different profiles and save your different profiles right there. Over here, we've got focus, autofocus to the face, autofocus single or autofocus continuous. If you do autofocus continuous, you can actually uh, tap different areas, single, you can move the points around, and then face, it'll automatically find the face. It does a great job of that. You can also choose whether you want it to focus fast or slow. Now, over here, we're getting into the exposure. We can choose the flicker rate, just like on any camera, just like on your DSLR. You really have a lot of control right here. You can choose your aperture. That's based on your lens. So Yellow Cam S7 is actually talking to the lens to find out this stuff. You can choose an automatic exposure, which would give you um, exposure compensation values of plus or minus eight. Or you can set your ISO and shutter as well as the aperture, which is set on the device, on the ring, or here in the software. Isn't that awesome? White balance over here. There's a lot we can do with white balance. I've got it on manual white balance because I'm using all of these different lights at the background, but the manual white balance is helpful here. However, even with a 20 by 20 blue red matrix, there's 400 different steps. Uh, there's not enough to really get this tone down because my shirt isn't purple. So my shirt's actually gray. There's kind of a purplish hint on it. Uh, I would like to see some more calibration here in this kind of lighting. Uh, it's because I use all these crazy lights in the background, but I don't have enough leeway to control here. But most of the time, plus or minus 20 on each axis would give you plenty of correction, including a manual white balance adjustment. Over here, we actually get into the audio. So this is giving you all the settings just like your camera uh, would. We have our volume, which is our, turn your volume or your gain up and down, the microphone type, uh, whether it would be a line or a mic, noise reduction, audio delay, and automatic gain. That's great. It's just these features are top-of-the-line features. And then over here we have our frame rate. We can choose uh, the lowest frame rate of 25 or up to 60 frames per second. Uh, and the firmware, we can upgrade it and we can uh, find out all the about information. That's a lot of customization and control. Now, if you were to ask me, why would I give up something like battery-powered uh, camera with a long telephoto zoom? Well, I might not give that up, not directly, but I definitely would give up something like a handheld camera and use the Yolocam S7 instead of using something like a, a DSLR on a stick somewhere, just capturing something wide mainly because at this point, I have quite a bit more control directly from Yellow Box. I think that's absolutely amazing. And because of that, it's entered my studio. 
directly. So here is where it makes the most sense. I can put this camera, I've got several different mounts, different places. I can put it wherever I want to get the type of shots that I want, and it just works. Because it's wired, it's harder for me to use in the field for a wedding or for a product shoot. But when I'm doing a setup location and I need an additional professional grade camera with a wide aperture lens and a big sensor, but I may not be moving around as much. Like when I'm recording bands, this works hand in hand with my Osbot Tail 2s because they all have large sensors. And the Osbot Tail 2 has a one inch sensor. This has a one over 1.3 inch sensor. They are so close in size. It, it just, um, it's amazing. And the quality that I get here with the S7 is outstanding. So when we look at the two side by side, <laughs> My cat's going nuts. When we look at the two side by side, come here, Jordan. One of the reasons you might have seen a different color is because the <laughs> this has been out for a few months. I can only imagine just how much it will grow, just like the other ecosystem of products. So I'm really excited to share this with you. I think that uh, the S7 is an excellent purchase if you're looking for a studio webcam. I just think it's great. It's, it's so much more than a webcam. It's not even uh, fair to call it a webcam. It's so close to a digital mirrorless camera that you might carry around. It just lacks the battery and a screen. So it's all of that. It's a studio camera. Th that, that's what we should call it. This, the Yellow Cam S7 is a studio camera with remote monitoring hand control. And so there you have it. My quick overview to share with you more information of these past couple of months of using the Yolocam S7. I have enjoyed it immensely, and I hope that you've enjoyed this quick review. Guys, my name is Rob. If you want to use any of my links to grab this stuff or send me a cup of coffee through PayPal, I would truly appreciate it. I want to thank you so much for watching. I remind you, I'll catch you on the flip side. Bye for now. <laughs>